This is the first of several lessons that concerns application programming interfaces or APIs on the web. This is likely one of the most fun topics and we will introduce it and showcase a simple example of how to retrieve current Bitcoin price on the cryptocurrency market. We can think of APIs as of protocols that enable transfer of information in and out of a server that is set up and continuously listening for queries. All we need to do is to know to which address to point our request and what is the correct syntax of it that such a server expects to receive. Luckily for us, all this is always documented, including the structure of the response from the server that is sent back to us. First, let's give a good source of free APIs people set up just for fun and not for commercial use. The commercial ones run exactly the same, but can be accessed only for a fee. So here's one good source at GitHub, uh, where you can browse a number of different free APIs. Next, as we already said, it is easier to show how API communication works on an example. So we will choose the Messari platform that provides a large amount of the current data on the most prominent cryptocurrency, Bitcoin. This is their API website right here. And here's an example of how the response to our query looks like. All this is stated on their API website. Let's quickly build the code that we need to showcase the API application, and then we will discuss the details. Before we build the blocks, a quick look at what we already placed in the designer window. There's a button for which we associate with a BTC image right here uh, from a free domain. And then there's a text box for display of the Bitcoin price. Also, we added a clock as we want to get the date and time for our query, as well as this web for internet communication through APIs. Okay, so now onto the blocks. So what we did here is that when the get a price button is clicked, the communication is actually exceptionally simple. Everything is done through the web component web get that addresses the specified web pointer and also retrieves whatever information the address server dispatches in response. After this action is executed, all that is left is to extract that response by the event handler web got text. If the whole exchange was successful, this response code is going to be 200, and this is why we check that first to make sure that everything runs smoothly. If so, we proceed to set the Bitcoin price on a display. We see here that uh, besides displaying the Bitcoin price, we also decided to add the date and time by calling the clock format date time function right here. And this is gonna give us in return first the date and then the time in these formats. This is gonna be followed by a space and a dollar sign and this dollar sign is gonna precede the actual Bitcoin value. Now, onto the Bitcoin value, right? We need to go and look at this response content, what we received back from the server. And for the time being, we're just gonna pretend that we do not know any better. So what we're gonna do 
is go to this large text. This is what it is essentially. And we need to search through it and find the Bitcoin price, right? So here's the data and then that's a clue. We search a little bit more and then there's lots of data here. Market data, right? Another clue and right here is the price in US dollars, right? Followed by a, a column and a space and then the actual value. So what are we doing? We're gonna search for this prompt, for this key, price underscore US dollars. And then we're gonna offset from here up to the point that we reach the actual value, right? So if we count all these indices, we're gonna count 11 that proceed up to the first digit of the price. So this is why we're splitting this text right here. We start at where we find the key price in US dollars, then we offset by 11 right here. And then we're gonna take the length of eight, which is gonna include five digit number, uh, space for a decimal point, and then two decimals. Simply that's how we decided to do it, right? And uh, then this is pretty much it. The only other thing here is that in case something goes wrong with this communication, we're going to go and display uh, that there is an error, right? That we need to check the connection. So for right now, everything's here and we can go back to our code and to our emulator and see if everything works as advertised, right? So we're supposed to click on this button. We're going to get what is the price uh, date and the time that we fetch this and this is the actual current price on the market right so if we click another time we see that it changes because it changes all the time right so changes a little bit and so on so we could fully stop right here and call it done but so far I completely avoided um, the obvious structure of this response content right here so if we look closer into this respond uh, content structure, we can realize that this is formatted as JSON, which is a J JavaScript object notifier. And this is the most common text formatting for information interchanges. And we already showed how to handle those in MIT App Inventor through dictionaries. So good news is that the functions to access and decipher JSON formatted text already exist in MIT App Inventor in dictionaries. So let's quickly go and make this change to dictionaries. to use dictionaries uh, we need to be able to understand the JSON structure of our response and this was already discussed in the dictionaries lesson so if we do we would realize that the info we need the Bitcoin price is nested within two objects the first one is data as the outer one and the inner object is the market data and our price in US dollars is essentially nested within this inner one market data so we need to be able to know how to access that but before that let's move back a little bit until the first change that we made in this code so the first change is that we want to convert our response content right here uh, to the app inventor dictionary and this is done through the function web and then conversion of a json text into the dictionary right here we're going to associate this dictionary with our local variable all text and then we're just going to proceed this doesn't change to set our display right to clock and the dollar sign the only change is right here 
So if we remember from dictionaries, if we have a multiple objects that are nested, we need to create a list and get a value at the key path, where this path is actually uh, set in the following manner. The outmost uh, object is first, and then the inner object, and so on, how many we have. And the last uh, item in this list is going to be the key uh, for the value that we're looking for, right? So we're going to search through this path in a dictionary, which is all text. And then, you know, if there, there's some issue, we're going to get a uh, text not found, right? If we successfully find, find our value, what we added here is also to format, since this is a number, we're going to format it with, say, one decimal uh, place, which is completely arbitrary, obviously. Nothing else changed, right? So we can now go back and check uh, that the code also works through dictionary function. This is what we wanted to show, right? So now, if we click again on our button and any time we press it, it's going to keep changing, right? Oh, this time it didn't change, actually. So let's try one more time. Okay, so it did change. We caught it in the moment that it didn't change. But okay, this is it for now. And uh, until the next time, bye.